what's up Leron here and today we're gonna paint this scene what's up Leron here thank you for joining me in another vid and today we're gonna paint this uh, beautiful scene that's right behind me. Um, I plan on focusing on this car that I'm pointing at. Uh, I just found the conditions the conditions that are really interesting. There's the car and it's really uh, well lit and then the background is a little darker, which is one of the things I really love to express with my work. Um, here's a sneak peek because I'm recording this after I finish the painting, so there we go. Okay, uh, and now we can jump uh, into the process. I'm gonna nar narrate it while uh, as I go and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Let's get started. Okay, so now you see the drawing process and I started with the uh, horizon line. Uh, this is always tricky for me. I still haven't really mastered it because where you think the horizon line should be isn't always where it is. Uh, I find that for me it's usually a little higher than I draw it. But in any case, uh, I still got a good, uh, I think, location there. Uh, with those lines that are running out of the uh, vanishing point, you want to make sure, at least that's what I find, that they don't lead to the corners of the painting because that tends to um, hurt the immersion in the, into the painting. You know, th this feeling that uh, you want to be pulled into the painting, you kind of lose that uh, when it uh, points to the corners. Uh, it kind of loses that uh, effect. Um, so anyway, now I'm just establishing the main ingredients uh, for the painting before I'm putting in all the cars and the trees and everything. So we've got this corner of the, of the um, sidewalk uh, that I want to get in there. Um, and again, apologies about the angle. That's like the best angle I can achieve for now, I think, uh, when when doing this outside. But I, th I still think it gives you a good idea. And I will uh, take a short break uh, after like 20 minutes to show you the uh, final result. So in any case, now I'm putting in that main car uh, that you see right under the sign. And this one is my main focus uh, for this painting. It's what I want to get the most details into. So I, I usually start with that. Uh, I find that if I start with the more in the distance elements I just lose concentration at times or I really prefer to when I'm at my strongest when I'm just starting to start with the elements that are a bit closer and at least at least put them in there uh, they're kind of skeleton or general shape now what I'm doing is I pulled out a few uh, lines out of the vanishing point to preserve my perspective because I, I do want to pull the viewer's eye into the tunnel that I'm creating uh, and I'm using that to determine the height of the trees. I don't usually, don't always do that. Sometimes I'll just measure the trees inside my scene and go at it that way. But with this one, I wanted to make sure that they're of a similar height. Uh, so I did take these measurements. Now this is a very small uh, painting, it's eighth of a sheet, so you can't really get too much details uh, in there. Uh, it's also been quite some time since I recorded this one. Uh, I think it's about a month and a half ago, uh, because I have this, this stock footage of <clears throat> many processes done outside, so uh, I will comment occasionally on things I would have done differently uh, today. Uh, this uh, the drawing itself, uh, I think it was at a time where I would try to go very detailed. Uh, now I'm trying to be uh, less, let's say, uh, clear with the the lines at this stage because it's very sketchy and now I'm going very bold. You already see many bold lines and it's just a sketch still. It's not the final accurate line, so um, that can hurt a bit the... You know, when you approach a painting and you want to paint everything, but there's a lot of pencil lines, it can deter you or make you not feel the painting process itself. So this is something I usually try to avoid. Uh, but, uh, you know, you could say it's a mistake. Some people prefer to have very strong pencil lines and multiple lines um, to make sure they put everything in place. Uh, for me, I work best with a nice balance of the pencil. And when I start painting, I want to have some very gentle lines to follow because that way psychologically I'm more prepared to tackle what I see with the brush and not just, you know, paint... Uh, between the lines or like, you know, the coloring books or anything like that. So I'm actually drawing with my brush. So now I'm uh, maybe overburdening the scene with some details, but that's fine. Um, I'm using this um, boxy rectangular shape uh, to to understand how I'm going to place the shape of the car inside that. Uh, this is what I always do when there's a perspective involved and it, it's a bit complex. I draw a box and then I constrain the car within that. Uh, and that allows you to get the details, um, um, I think, a little more accurately. 
Uh, sometimes it's funny sometimes I'm not in the mood of being this accurate and I'm just sketching it in and sometimes you pay a price for being that uh, quick and and loose with the drawing uh, but I think it's always remember uh, it's always important to remember the the price you pay for being too slow and you have the sun moving and the, the light changes so you really do have to be quick at times uh, and then when you're inside if you want to develop the scene uh, into something more finalized you can uh, definitely uh, work a little slowly based on a photo reference. Uh, what I actually did with this scene is I took a photo just so that I have the crop clear to me so I know where I'm going to constrain the scene um, and then I paint, I drew and painted based on the real view but I only used the photo for the composition and some elements of the drawing. Now an important part of this is the light and shadow that are cast upon the street. You see there's this gap of light and these things are going to be really beautiful later on so I want to preserve them. So I uh, hinted at them but you see again I was very heavy handed with the pencil so you see a lot of um, a lot of sketchy lines that are a little too strong for my taste if I would have done this one again. Um, but in any case these lines are very important and you'll notice how I s gently cross hatched them uh, in just to indicate where the shadow is and where the light is. It could be a little confusing when you have lots of uh, horizontal lines and then you, you're unsure of where to place the shadow, where to place the light. Uh, so I did it that way. I also exaggerated it and added a few more gaps of light. And the reason why is I think it would just work better compositionally. And you can see there are several cars on the left. There are two cars mainly. And then one kind of in the distance scribbled in there. And so the two cars on the left, I wanted to have a gap between them as well. Which is why I added this extra gap. Um, the, the red... Um, container on the left. I haven't included that at all, so if you're confused about its location, it's not there. Um, despite loving the, the color, I think the color works really well with the trees and it could work well as a part of the painting, but I didn't have the insight back then to uh, include it in. And I think that today I would have, uh, because there's a lo also a, an interesting play of light and shadow on that. Uh, so now I'm placing in some windows some very few details on the building just to uh, pass on the impression of, of this as a building. I don't care too much about what's in there and you can barely see it um, in the photo reference that I'm sharing with you but it's there and I just want to uh, emphasize that this is a building and, and not do too much uh, in addition to that. That's enough. Uh, so now we're moving on to the first wash. I just skipped some of the final lines. Sorry about that. I don't even remember why but uh, yeah. I'm starting with the wash and my plan here is to get a very uh, even initial wash that will cover everything up uh, just to take off some of the pressure of uh, you know having to paint very accurately. Uh, I do leave some room for clouds. Um, I, f I, I had that, that kind of time period where <laughs> I tried to include clouds in every single painting. Um, it's less my style and I don't really love the way they turn out. Maybe I should just practice on it but uh, in any case the the bottom side of the cloud is a little darker. Now there's still a lot of harsh edges here so I will go back with uh, with a damp brush and smoothen out hopefully some of these edges uh, as far as I remember. I'm um, using three primaries mainly for this one. The, um, uh, some kind of a phthalo blue, then there's the quinacridone rose and some uh, <coughs> yellow. I think it's uh, a, a relatively neutral yellow, nothing too warm or too cool. So we're about uh, eight minutes into the process. There will be a, a break, as I mentioned. Here I'm blending some of the edges. Uh, there will be a break around the 22 minutes mark. Um, and now here I am. I have to be really aware of the edges on the buildings because they're drying and I have to come back really fast. I'm trying to exploit the wet and wet but simultaneously I'm thinking about my edges, edges constantly. That's I think one of the greatest challenges with watercolor uh, painting. You have to be very aware at least in the beginning of everything and you saw me spraying some water on it just to improve the flow because I'm, I know that some of them have dried. I waited too long. Now I want to reduce the flow uh, downwards. I do want the, the areas to merge together but I want to reduce the flow. So you see me changing the angle uh, just to make sure that uh, the blue doesn't uh, bleed too much into the yellow because that can happen very often and I remember when I s got started and I saw people mix uh, yellow and blue right next to one another and it never turned into green and for me it would always turn into green and I hated that. So uh, 
to avoid that from happening, you want less of a, of a slope. Uh, and you also want to maybe uh, create some distance between the, the, the yellow and the blue part. You can add some gaps in there and fill them up later. You can pull it off. I had a, a bit of a fear that if I don't close off, don't allow all shapes to touch, the painting is going to be a little, um, feel like a cutout, you know, like it's not one harmonious piece of work, but rather different uh, different parts. And I do have that happen to me sometimes when I uh, sketch the people in, uh, or paint rather, the people in. They do feel like cut out at times. Uh, there's a lot to... There's a lot to practice in terms of the overall approach, I think. Uh, so so we, uh, these are just things you have to uh, work on more and more until you master them. It's it's really a big challenge. Now, what I'm doing is leaving, leaving that highlight on the front of the car. Uh, what I should do is cover the right side of the car, and hopefully I will. I just don't remember. Um, and I also left that highlight on the left car. Now... I think these highlights are a little too light. What I would have should have done, I shouldn't have used the paper white, but rather mix a very gentle yellow and, and then place that in, but that's fine. Now I wanted to have that shadow on the right a little cooler, so I started adding blue. But here you can see the problem of this because probably the contrast is a little too strong right now. Uh, that's the, the problem. And, and the fronts of the cars should be a little yellow. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned this in a in a... A video I did about, I think, a month ago, I talked about how it's um, this. It's it's just the contrast thing is very hard, and sometimes you you nail it exactly like you want, and sometimes you don't. And I'm starting to develop this sixth sense of telling when it's off. And when you look at uh, masters, and, and and when I look at my own processes where I feel like I nailed everything down, you can just see how all of the values are on point immediately. That's, I think, what characterizes, for example, uh, Edward Segoe's work, wh which we reviewed in the Painting Masters episode. He has a way of putting in the right value immediately, uh, which I think is a very rare ability. It takes a lot of time to develop. Uh, so in any case, now I'm starting with the second uh, wash, uh, adding in the trees. Now, instead of doing that, if I would have remade this one today, what I would have probably done is add a wash of mid values. Now here I'm jumping straight into the, the shadows. Um, this was a repeating mistake of mine that I'm really proud of myself for eliminating. Uh, putting in a very light initial wash and then adding immediately uh, too shadowy of a wash. And then what happens is you have a huge gap between your lights and darks. And that's fine and this contrast can look good when it's called for. But when it's not, you end up missing the mid values. So what I will probably end up doing with this one, because uh, I did correct some of these mistakes, is go back uh, into the, the mid values and um, and fix them. But if you're doing a good job, you don't really uh, need to go back and revisit anything. You just get the values in there. Um, just generally speaking, it's okay if you don't get them right the very first time. Uh, but there is this kind of a freshness to it when you are able to. Okay, so that's just something to have in mind. It's not the end of the world, and you see I'm, uh, I think I'm doing a decent job with this one, uh, despite, you know, not getting everything perfect the first time. It's a lot of practice, and I think it's uh, borderline being a master to be able to do that. Um, and it's something I strive for, and hopefully with time, it'll happen. Uh, now, I did something I usually don't do, and that is uh, outline the tree. Uh, I try not to do that because sometimes it shows, but if you're quick enough, that's okay. Uh, now, I have this thing here that I want towards the right to blend some of it into the distance and not have it show too much. Um, to, to create the sense of depth here. Uh, and some of my struggles with this scene was that not only am I using eighth of a sheet, it's also slightly less of an eighth of a sheet. The width is squeezed even more. So uh, it's a very thin piece of paper, long and thin. Uh, and that can be a challenge when you want to convey... I wanted to convey height, so I couldn't do it landscape orientation. I had to go portrait. But then I didn't have too much of a distance to play around with when it comes to the tunnel, okay? Um, so I did the best I could, um, and that's fine. Sometimes <laughs> there's a lot of things you deal with that you don't even think about until you have to. Now, uh, here's a sign that I'm going a bit too dark immediately, and that is you can really see the, the contrast between the trees, 
and the cars and the bottom part of them. And I would have preferred if it wasn't like that, if, if the contrast wouldn't be as striking. Um, so yeah, now I'm doing some wet and wet, getting uh, some details of the shadows of the foliage there. And now I'm moving towards the car and handling that top area above the car. And this is an interesting area because it will help us create the define the shape of the car by negatively painting around it. Um, and then I'll try and connect these shadows, hopefully with the shadows on the car themselves. Um, and uh, and just, yeah, now I'm just letting it blend a bit to the right, um, trying to to make that, create that shape here. Um, if you are able to notice the negative shapes, you open up a, a whole new world of possibilities, in my opinion, uh, because that way it allows you to better represent what you see and even be more accurate because negative painting and negative drawing for that matter has a lot of um, merits uh, just as a practice to see the shape that's that's the opposite of what you see like now just leaving a few highlights and, and making them interesting uh, that whole thing is and it's something that you know making random patterns and and using the negative painting that's something I still learn how to do uh, I usually don't get it to look exactly the way I want to uh, but that's fine so now uh, I'm trying to, I don't know what I was doing with my hand, that's weird, <laughs> but I'm adding that uh, the glass of the car uh, from the back. Uh, you see it's way too thick and it doesn't allow the paint to, to, uh, to I guess, flow well. Uh, and that's fine as long as you know how dark it should be and, and what the area is. It's just not such a good way of doing things. It's so funny because I disliked many things about this one while working on it. Um, and, and then a few people, and I'm going to talk about it later on, a few people uh, passed by. Two uh, young people passed by, uh, a boy and a girl, and they were like, uh, they were amazed by it. And they said I made their day. And that's really that was really humbling because you know you can't sometimes see the value of what you do. You need an outside perspective. You know we talk about it a lot here of uh, being a little blind to how good or even how bad your painting is depending on the circumstances. Uh, but yeah, so now I have a few problems to solve around the car, uh, and that is uh, there is just a lot of details on the right side where I'm working on right now and on the left. And I want to make sure that I leave it kind of abstract because you can't indicate everything, not in this small piece of paper. You can, but it'll be super hard. It's not really the look I strive for. So I need to figure out how to simplify that big mess that I see and turn it into something coherent that will um, that will express unity and, uh, you know, just being one painting. So uh, now I'm adding in that shadow and I warm it up a little bit if you notice. I'm making using a bit of a warmer color. I hope that I leave enough gap between the wheels and the ground and I don't. I don't leave a highlight there. That's a big no-no. Uh, I should have probably left a highlight there. Um, and now seeing it I cringe a bit. Not because it's that bad but because I'm like oh almost I should have. And uh, yeah, I think watching your yourself paint. Now this is a bit more like it. This is a little more wet, a little lighter. This is how I should. Okay now I ruined that as well. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just seeing this uh, done again is a really good exercise in, um, in uh, you know, analyzing your own work. Uh, I, again, I didn't leave a gap for the highlight under the car, which I find is so common. Uh, but that's a newer insight that I learned uh, only more recently. So that's fine. Can't blame myself too much for it. Uh, but it just goes to show me the way I've come. Uh, so, so yeah, now I'm basically done with the main shadows. Uh, what I will need to do is work on the simplification to the right and to the left, which is going to be a big challenge. Uh, taking care of that building um, and also some details to the uh, sidewalk and the, the red uh, color there. Um, and then some tr tr details to the trees and stuff like that. Uh, and there's also the details of the cars themselves, like the tail lights and the yellows for the license plate and, and so on. Uh, so now I'm taking care of the simplification in the background. That white area there or bright area here, there had no real use, so I got rid of it. Uh, now I'm going back with some red. Uh, I don't even know what I'm going to do with that. Um, but but for the taillights, I need that. And I also need it maybe for some of the cars there in the background. Um, yeah, so here we go for the taillights. Um, 
And red can be a really tricky color because it's much darker than people think. And sometimes you place in red and it doesn't look right because you went too dark and you should have kept it a little lighter. Uh, people don't necessarily imagine red as a dark color, but usually when you have a picture and you desaturate it, the reds tend to be a lot darker. Uh, I don't know why, but it's just their natural state is a little darker. Of course, not all reds. There's some uh, lighter pinks and violets, but red, real red, is can be very dark. Um, and and even the opposite is true. If you look at a picture and you see some very dark areas, there's a high probability that they're red. And you don't know the colors, there is a probability that they're red. So now I'm going back with some yellow for the license plate. It's kind of an orangey yellow. I think it's Turner's yellow. I think generally the yellows I'm using in this one are a mix of Turner's yellow and lemon yellow maybe, or yellow ochre. Um, I don't know why I did that. I think I started with... Uh, uh, Turner's yellow and then I hated it so I said oh let's add some yellow ochre uh, but in any case I really like how the car on the left turned out with the tail lights uh, I think it's a good impression hopefully I'll get in the, the back shield uh, or glass as well because it's really important here um, and you know many times while painting here we go I got it <laughs> uh, many times while painting you'll find yourself lost at times and you'll be like I don't know what to do next um, and that's very common my advice for that, because I feel myself going into that state as I'm actually watching myself paint, uh, my main advice would be to look at the values and just figure out, uh, is everything as dark as it should or are some things uh, darker than they should be? Um, and that way you get a good idea of what the next step is. For example, the entire building on the left is a little too light. Okay, so I just want to show you from a normal angle what I've got so far. Uh, pretty pleased with this. There's still some uh, work to do, but let me show you. So here's what I've got so far. Uh, this is basically the initial wash, and then on top of that, uh, I added another one that just shades uh, the trees, darkens them a bit, then the shadows on the cars, uh, leaving all of the yellow and red from earlier uh, as highlights. Uh, the next step would be to add some darker highlights to that, uh, especially under the cars. Um, and probably somewhere here on the buildings in the background here to bring out the trunks of these trees. I'm um, kind of winging it. This is a really small size, so I couldn't get too accurate with the drawing as well. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can produce out of that, and I think I'll probably add more shadows here uh, on top of this tree especially. So the next step is to darken that building, as I was saying uh, just a moment ago, uh, because it is a little too light. Now, I'm trying to do that. Now I learned uh, of some better ways to do that without killing the the warmth, for example, or the, you know, I just shade with orange or with red or with yellow. Uh, but back then it was a challenge. But that's fine because the building itself should be a lot darker uh, and it will make the, the street um, a little more it'll make it pop a little more, it'll make it more significant. Um, and yeah, so now I'm trying to exploit some of the wet and wet here and add some details. And you don't have too much wiggle room, again, because it's such a small piece of paper. Uh, so I'm just doing the, the very uh, essentials and not more than that, um, because it's really otherwise you're you'll end up with a big mess especially with this small piece of paper uh, i actually experienced uh, the opposite challenge and that is um when i used to work on a smaller pieces of paper consistently and then i started uh, working on larger pieces uh, i found that my uh, paintings weren't detailed enough because i got so used to getting things as lightly and as gently as possible that i forgot that when you paint large you kind of have to include more details. Otherwise, it'll look empty, like a barren wasteland, or, you know, just it won't have a lot of details in it. Um, so this is the, the opposite of that problem. So here you want to be careful not to put in too much because then you'll get lost. So now I made the... I, I actually made the left tree appear in front of our eyes by negative painting the shadows of the tree on the back. So now you can see that there are in fact three trees here, the rounded one in the front, uh, the one in the middle that I just shaded, and another one behind it. And I want to pull some tree trunks and some details, maybe some branches, uh, at, to the bottom there, uh, because it does need to be a little darker. And if you look at the reference, you will see this. Uh, the challenge here is to make random patterns. That's something, again, that I'm working on. It's very challenging, and I don't want to pull off all that darkness too much to the right, uh, because I want it to kind of fade into the distance. 
Um, so that's another thing. You are always thinking about what you're drawing with the brush, how dark or light it is, the temperature. These are all things that need to be taken into consideration. And it's not always easy. You kind of are juggling or spinning many plates uh, simultaneously. And uh, you have to, uh, with time, improve that coordination. I just thought about it this at this moment uh, in this kind of particular way. But it is true. That's how it feels at times. Um, so, yeah. So, now I'm adding some gentle shadows to this tree. But not too much. Uh, and the reason why is because <laughs> I tend to sometimes kill off the highlights uh, as well. Uh, so, really keeping it light. And I also wanted to preserve the shape, the individual shape, when compared to the tree that's a little more in the distance, that's a little farther away. Um, so right now I'm trying to think of what else is missing here because I don't want to overdo it. That was a really cute dog, by the way. <laughs> Dogs sometimes stop and stare as well. Uh, so I just want to think about what's missing here and then add that and nothing more. So to me, it feels like a bit of yellow is missing. And hopefully I will uh, solve that soon uh, by adding a bit of, uh, I guess, uh, flowers and, and things like this uh, to the left side there. I think there's a, a nice spot for that. Uh, so now some gentle dry brush. This girl is like, Mom, this guy is drawing. And yeah, it's always fun to, to paint outside. Uh, hear the funny remarks of people walking by. Uh, so with that tree, again, I'm trying to be light. Uh, the shadows aren't going to continue upwards. I, I could have just left it as it was. Uh, I think that today I wouldn't have even done that. Um, I'm trying to blend it in now because it was a bit too much. So you see. Um, yeah, that was a big uh, challenge <laughs> for me. Funny enough, I think today this scene would be much, much simpler. Uh, I learned some methods that really work for this particular scene or scene type, let's say. Uh, now these trees, uh, tree trunks on the right, very gentle, very thin. I just wanted to get them in there and create that contrast once again with the ground itself that's very well lit. And then it felt like I should continue that shadow once again. Um, th this was a part where, you know, sometimes you don't have clarity as to what you're painting, and that's fine. It means maybe you haven't taken enough time to interpret the scene um, or to simplify it or to think about the impression, the specific impression you want to pass on to the viewer. And I can say that this is one of those times that I just went for it, and it has its advantages and its disadvantages. So that's what you get. Um, I, I'm sorry for the mixing times that are a bit long and I don't show them. Um, uh, so, so I hope you'll... Uh, you're, you're still able to watch and enjoy uh, without it. Now I'm starting to work on those flowers I saw on the left, picking up some pure red and dabbing it in there. And notice how dark the, wet, the red is um, without even trying too much. And now I'm going to add some yellow in between the red uh, and create that foliage and colorful thing, just color colorfulness that I wanted to because it felt like it was lacking a bit in that sense. So we get this yellowy orange and uh, it's just an interesting result that brings some light to this. Uh, I think this painting was really positively received on Instagram. It got a lot of likes. Um, I can tell because sometimes, you know, paintings get a moderate amount of likes and sometimes they get a lot of likes. This one I think got uh, pretty a big number of likes and and I do like it's not that I really care about the likes I, I want people to enjoy what I post uh, the most but regardless it's just good feedback it's just a good way for me to tell uh, if a painting does its job and, and uh, is you know by, by the way it's received uh, now I'm trying to do some dry brush for the windows on the building on the left again very gentle uh, uh, just to accentuate some of the shapes of the windows uh, I wonder if there was a better way of doing it um, I think it's a bit too dark and I could have preserved that part uh, and have it a little lighter uh, but in any case, it still works uh, as a building, I suppose. Uh, the top part that's just above the cars, that's one area where I think uh, it's it's a bit light. And that's fine, but it, there's it's missing some details. So I'm really thinking about what I could have done there. Um, I think a lot of it has to do, again, with the basic interpretation of the scene. Like what I'm doing right now, I have no idea what I'm doing. I think it was too much. Maybe I'll dab it away or, you know, just adding some lines that... I guess would hint at the fact that this is a building and it has a perspective and all of that, uh, but not my best attempt at that necessarily. Uh, so now I'm strengthening the shadow under it and I still didn't include a gap for the highlight there. There's a very important highlight. Okay, now I left some of it and now I erased it. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing that I would definitely do uh, differently today. 
Uh, but I'm really pleased. I'm really happy about this one. It's uh, and it shows me the long way I've uh, come since then, um, and and that again makes me really happy. Um, so some things, you know, some mistakes are so subtle that it's hard to correct them, uh, especially if someone asks for feedback and you're like, hmm, it's all wrong. Like what can I say? Like with this one. I mean, I like the way it looks, but if I'd had to point out the mistakes, they would be so basic. It's like the interpretation of the scene, how I set it up, the composition, the values are off. The drawings aren't as accurate as they, they could be, although that they're fine. You know, they're not the best, but not the worst. Uh, there's so much to... When something's off, it's, it's, it tends to be off in, um, on multiple dimensions or ways. So this makes it very hard to critique. Uh, and it makes it also hard to critique this as well. My only feedback for this one would be paint more. Uh, continue practicing, you know. Uh, and that's usually my advice for, for most people that ask for feedback. Uh, so yeah. So in any case, this is really near the end of it. I'm just adding some small, small, small details here, making some areas of the red a little darker. But we will soon uh, see the final results. Uh, in just a few moments, it's going to be on the screen. Uh, and I will kind of do a wrap up and talk a bit about the process, how I felt about it, and what it was like. Um, so uh, just some final, final touches. I think there's a minute to the process. Um, so yeah, so that's the, the main tip. If you're struggling with just about anything that has to do with painting and watercolor and drawing, it's just to do it more. Uh, and I suppose make sure that you don't repeat your mistakes. If you've been doing the same mistakes for two months uh, or three months or so, then maybe you need to try and try something different. You know, that's the main thing. And it's hard to break our patterns. It's really a challenge. I, I have patterns still that are hard for me to uh, break uh, when it comes to color use and how I vary the colors. And when it comes to the, the planning of the scene, this is where I lack in skills and, and I think I need to work more on uh, that part. But overall, I'm really pleased with my progress. And this helps me see this, uh, uh, the progress itself. So now, um, uh, I think this is the nice couple that stopped by and, and complimented me on the painting. Uh, so here's the final result, and now I'm going to do a proper wrap up. Okay, so I'm done here. I think I did pretty much everything I can to make this look good. Uh, and I think it's time to stop, so let me show you what I've got. So here's the final result, and it's funny, uh, two nice uh, people just stopped by and we talked for a moment or two, um, and they uh, commented on this part. And it's funny because you never really plan it out, and I was going to focus on this part, but <laughs> this part ended up being, uh, I think, very interesting and a very good uh, expression of what I see. Um, I, as you can see, I had to make up a lot of things that weren't really there, uh, so it's all made up. Um, the light conditions as well, I planned around with it a lot, but this is really a small one, you can see by the size of my hand, uh, it's a really small one, so you can't expect to be too detailed or too uh, like perfect, you just gotta lay it down and hope for the best. So this is it for today, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, video, I think um, there's a lot to learn from this one, and it's really just incremental progress. Each one of these processes teaches me something really small that I then uh, get to apply in other paintings uh, like this one outside and I apply it inside and it's much much easier because everything plays in your favor. You don't have the all of the you know the sun shifting and people walking by and mosquitoes biting you and all of that. Um, so in any case yeah I really hope you enjoy this one. I'm trying to record every week outside for you uh, because I find that it helps me grow and also um, it's just something that I want to do more of. I think there's a refreshing thing with recording outside. So in any case, this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn how to uh, draw like this, then uh, you can check out my course in the description box below. Uh, draw Anything course is going to be the first thing there. Um, and this is it. I will see you again in another vid real soon.